So you finally bought a brand new motorcycle. You've leveled up from years of Craigslist crap bikes to buying a shiny new steed right off the showroom floor. A brand new motorcycle may have less mechanical gremlins than a used bike with a questionable past, but there are a few steps you should take in the first thousand or so miles of ownership to ensure it will live a long and happy life. That's where the engine break-in comes to play. Proper break-in procedure is often debated by people with too much time on their hands and nothing more important to worry about, so leave it to Papa Yam to set the record straight. Here's everything you need to know about breaking in a new motorcycle. Breaking in a motorcycle can refer to the multiple components or systems in a motorcycle, but the most important part to consider is how to break in a new motorcycle's engine. Engine break-in is the process in which piston rings become properly seated against the cylinder walls. This involves scoring the walls in a way that will match the most minute characteristics of the piston rings, allowing them to create an optimal seal between piston ring and cylinder wall. An ideal seal ensures engine longevity, no loss in compression or increased oil consumption. So how does one properly break in a motorcycle to perfectly mate the piston rings to the cylinder walls? This is where the debate comes in. Some people stand by the gentle engine break-in, where engine RPM is limited and moments of sustained engine speed are avoided. This is typically what most manufacturers recommend in the service manual for their motorcycles. There is usually an ideal schedule predetermined by the manufacturer to when engine RPM should be increased. It may look something like this. For the first 600 miles, avoid wide open throttle, avoid sustained engine speed, limit RPM to 7000. So for the first 600 miles, you may want to vary your engine speed by continuously moving up and down in the revs, but stay below 7,000 RPM and avoid a constant RPM. So don't go on the freeway and click on the cruise control at 3,500 RPM and leave it there for 30 miles. Varied engine speed allows the pistons to continuously and evenly score the entire cylinder wall. And while it manufacturers often recommend avoiding wide open throttle, you don't want to baby your engine either, especially you don't want to lug the engine by being in too high a gear for the speed and your motorcycle is traveling. Usually after this predetermined amount of time, 600 miles or so, an oil and filter change is recommended. After this first oil change, it is not abnormal to see metal shavings in your oil as a result of the scoring of your cylinder walls. Changing this oil early will prevent the metal shavings from damaging any bearings or other moving parts within your engine. After this first 600 miles or so, manufacturers usually have another interval where RPM limit is increased while still being lower than the final red line, so say from 600 to 1000 miles. Engine RPM should be limited to 10,000 RPM, and after 1000 miles you can ride it without any restrictions. Like I said, most manufacturers have a break-in procedure similar to this, but you'll be able to find the specifics in your owner's manual. And while manufacturers recommend a break-in that sounds something like this, does that mean it's entirely necessary? Or is it just an attempt to protect themselves from excessive warranty claims or class action lawsuits? Many people, including lifelong motorcyclists, mechanics, and even engineers, stand by what is known as the hard break-in, myself included. During a hard break-in, it is encouraged to run your motorcycle hard across the entire rev range to ensure that the seating of the piston rings and cylinder walls is indicative of the way an engine will be run during normal operation. Some people just say, break it in the way you would normally ride it, which honestly makes plenty of sense. As long as some of the common basic sense is used like letting the engine fully warm up before running it hard and not sustaining redline for an exaggerated amount of time. I'm sure there are plenty of Jixxer 600s that were written super hard the minute they left the dealership and are still alive and well. It is also important to change your oil early no matter how you break in your engine because there will be metal shavings in the oil no matter what. There is some anecdotal evidence suggesting that engines are more than capable of being ridden hard the minute they leave the dealership, like how Ducati runs their bikes on a dyno through the entire rev range before they even leave the factory. But Ducati isn't exactly the benchmark for reliability. A lot of the superstition about engine break-in comes from the past when engines really did require a period of proper break-in or they literally wouldn't last as long more than a few thousand miles. But with modern engineering practices and quality control standards, a super gentle break-in is more for peace of mind than anything else. Now guys, we have a super special giveaway bike coming later this week. It is a truly legendary bike that I think you guys are gonna go bananas over. Can you guess what it is? Here's a hint. Other than the Triumph Daytona 675R, it was my dream bike before I started riding motorcycles almost 10 years ago. 
Maybe it's the namesake of the channel. Anyways, if you want to find out what our new modern classic giveaway is going to be, head over to yamminoob.co and become a member. Get 10% off on all purchases on our store, and you'll also get access to the Discord server where you can get behind the scenes looks on everything that's going on here at Yammy Noob. If you want to find out what the next giveaway bike is, that's the way to do it. Head over to yamanoob.co, select one of our most popular bundles, and join up. Now, there have been multiple studies done where two identical motorcycles are broken in differently. One using a manufacturer recommended gentle break-in, and the other with a hard ride it like you'd normally ride it break-in. And the results have shown the differences in the engines are negligible, and the tolerances between cylinder and wall are almost identical. Although it is important to mention that these tests are usually performed on smaller displacement motorcycle engines, not incredibly high stressed, high revving racing engines. The big factors that will impact the way a motorcycle is broken in properly are varied RPMs, allowing the bike ample time to warm up before giving her the beans, and if you want to be extra cautious, take some brakes after running the bike hard to let it cool back down. And at around 500 or 600 miles, just be sure to change that oil. If you do those things and still end up with engine troubles, there was likely some sort of manufacturing defect that worked to grenade your engine regardless of how it was broken in. And that's why new bikes come with manufacturer warranties. It's important to mention that an engine is not the only part of a motorcycle that needs to be run in. If you're rolling off the lot on a shiny new motorcycle, your tires and brakes are also brand new. New tires do not have the ideal grip for the first 100 miles or so, so be sure to take it easy on turns or in wet conditions, as the rubber will need some time to wear in and create adequate grip on the pavement, as curing chemicals and release agents need to be worn off. If you have the time and space, taking some slow turns in a parking lot for 20 minutes or so can help accelerate the wear in on the sides of the tire that are in constant contact with the road. Similarly, brand new brake pads need time to break in or bed in to achieve maximum effectiveness, a smooth working surface between pad and rotor, and a Allow the pads to gradually heat cycle. It's pretty simple to bed in the brakes on a new motorcycle, you just need to accelerate to about 30 miles an hour and then gradually slow back down without coming to a complete stop. Do that a handful of times while gradually increasing the speed at which you're riding before you begin to stop and pretty soon your brakes will be bedded in and you'll be all set up to begin proper braking. Here's how I would go about buying a brand new motorcycle and driving it off the lot. After the deal is done, the keys are in my hand, I would take the bike and immediately do a burnout followed by a wheelie. Look, just kidding. I would first start up the bike, let it idle for 5-10 to 10 minutes, and just make sure everything appears to be in proper order. Then, when first leaving the lot, take the opportunity to break in both the tires and brakes with some gentle acceleration, progressive braking, and turning to tear off some of the wear off the manufacturer's sheen on the tires. After that, I would begin riding somewhat normally on surface streets. It's best to avoid a highway so you don't run the risk of staying at one constant engine speed for too long. City traffic will be a lot more conducive to running the engine through a lot majority of the rev range. However, you can just change gears on the highway and move revs that way too. Be mindful of your shifting as to not overstress the engine, but avoid lugging it too, which can be just as bad or even worse for your engine. After a bit of riding, I'd find a spot to pull off and let the motorcycle cool down for a bit, and then proceed as normal, varied engine RPM and avoiding wide open throttle or sustained very high RPMs. After 600 miles, be sure to change the oil and filter, and by 1000 miles, it should be pretty much broken in. I feel like the best break-in procedure is a combination of a little bit of everything. Take heed of the manufacturer recommendation, use some common sense, let the bike warm up, and change your oil and you should be golden. I feel like being overly cautious can be more destructive than just riding it as you normally would ride it and using common sense. Most motorcycles are really quite well made today and undergo tests before leaving the factory. Just enjoy your new bike and don't let the nerds and boomers scare you. Just ride it how you normally ride it and you'll probably be fine. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. What do you think? Hard or soft braking? Duke it out in the comment section. Please tell me what braking in a motorcycle was like back in your day. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll see you next time. Fact. Isaac Asimov is the only author to write a book in every Dewey Decimal category. Goodbye. Keep watching Amy Noob!